Hi friends, this is Michael Canales with the Carmel Doll Shop and the Groovian Doll Museum. Today we're having a special book unveiling. Uh, recently we had one of our speakers, Belle Ann Curry, uh, with us and she spent a lot of time in the building and she said to me, you don't really have any books. Well, we do have books, but most of our books are out of sight. Um, the one thing that I love is original source material. And this wonderful um, book, Feminia, is actually um, a bound, bound magazines. And this is very special for, um, particularly if you're dressing Fanny and getting involved in Fanny's world to understand where she's coming from. Um, this edition was give, gifted to us by Bradley Justice, and uh, we really thank him. It's a wonderful, wonderful magazine. So we're starting at the year 1913, January, and we can see here's the director of the magazine. Uh, she's probably 42, but looks much more matronly, and she really isn't up to date style-wise but magazines exist to sell advertising. And one thing we can learn from advertising is like, for instance, this is the ideal 1913 body shape, which I always think that the bosom looks like one um, bosom rather than two separate entities. And you can see the, the um, undergarments of the time, but, it's very old fashioned. And then when we get, boom, suddenly high fashion comes into uh, play in this wonderful illustration. But what is very interesting is you look up in the corner and the illustration was done in 1912. So it could have been done in, you know, uh, September or October uh, for the new season. And then you have the wonderful, um, this magazine was not a total um, society magazine or a fashion magazine. It was a little bit of this and that. And there were actual theatrical personalities involved in um, the, the uh, covered in the magazine. So here we have an actress in a theatrical costume and she's a Comédie de la Française. So I'm going to go through some pages and of course you have humor. So here you have the young uh, lady, the young feminine with the, I mean, we don't even really need to read the caption. It's just kind of funny. Now they covered society, but it seemed to be um, a little bit. Uh, here we have marriages and christenings and whatnot. And here are our uh, uh, first ladies of France, various political wives. And then here, which is very interesting, this is a snow scene. And the girl has obviously fallen on the, over, but she is wearing little pantalets uh, that are meant to, to, to show. And now we start to uh, le shopping, um, start to see the really high style. You know, the director was very out of date, but what they were actually promoting was really right up there time-wise, 1913. And we think of Photoshopping as something modern. Well, I have to tell you that I'm sure was Photoshopped in the latest dance steps, and you can see the birth of the tango. It's not quite the tango, but it's it's getting there. And we've got some royalty with children. They seem to, even though they didn't have a royal family in uh, France in 1913, they seem to cover quite a bit of European royalty, and this 
is just an amazing ensemble. It would be perfect for Fanny. With the dogs, the dogs are great. I'm gonna to try to um, stay on some things long enough that you can do screenshots. And this is January 1913. Some lovely advertisements. Interesting illustrations. And the name of the magazine is female, so you're going to have a lot of, um, everything is geared towards what females would find interesting at that time, supposedly. And this is a very interesting, um, you know, World War, World War I is just right around the corner, and here you have your Red Cross nurses' uniforms. And here you've got more Red Cross nurses. The, the female is quite active. Now here she's bobsledding, and that looks pretty treacherous. And now we have theatrical costumes, which are fabulous. And this one is just phenomenal. I love how the, the uh, mantle is across. Lots of um, folklorical type of things. Here you have your country uh, costumes, regional. And here we have a goddess on a chariot. Now we have Let's see, what month is this? It must be February. Yes, it's February. Oh yes, make you buy this solution and your hair will look just like that. Now, this is interesting. Here we've got a onesie that's basically the forerunner to a girdle because it looks elasticized at the leg right here, you can see. The feminine is very uh, athletic, we can see. Again, a beautiful illustration. More happenings. I think people like to keep up with that. Now we have some wonderful um, shoe designs and some fantastic illustrations, which I love this one. This one would be fabulous for Fanny. And this one too. Now here are your suggestions for children um, in fancy dress costumes. So you have the ballerina, you have the folklorical costumes. You have the uh, punch, the prince, and the goddess. And Cupid, really cute. Now we're at some wonderful illustrations. And here we have almost a directoire inspired um, costumes. Just fantastic. I love the muff. And I love the bag. Mm, it's wonderful. The tray chic illustrations. Wonderful coats. More beautiful illustrations. Daytime wear. see fancy dress that's something we haven't done yet but that was very um, important I'll go back to that now we've got somebody an illustration of them uh, picking out fabrics at the dressmakers and here we have a, a, clearly a group of people at a um, costume ball in London Oh, these are some great 
the these are dresses and uh, evening hats to go to the theater. So they're stunning. And now we're in, uh, now we're still in February. Beautiful illustration. This is interesting how the like, traditional headdress is used with fashionable clothes for Alsace Lorraine. Lace even in 1913, I think the, the First World War really took its toll on the lace making, but here you can see a um, veil for a wedding gown that they suggested. And this would have cost a pretty penny at the time. Oh, you can almost see that this is called the, the Rouge. And you can almost see the modern world coming, just peeking right around the corner, the modern woman, the modern female, I guess I should say. And this is actually wonderful. These silhouettes, 1780, 1830, 1860, and then 1913. You can see that uh, really the hobble skirt, difficult to walk, which Fanny prefers because they are derogueur. I'm gonna just skip through. Oh, and I think this is interesting, how you would learn the latest dance steps. So they would give you a diagram on how to do that, which I could never figure that out. Again, another wonderful illustration. Great ideas for hats. Now we've got some wonderful um, evening dresses. Very Grecian-esque. Well, they're not all evening dresses because this one over to the right is a suit. So that's for day wear. There'll be a little background noise. I'm sorry here because it is a working day. This one is particularly, I think, really beautiful. The front. Here's a lady that has won uh, the Legion of Honor, which is a met. Um, uh, So this is a winner of the Legion of Honor, which is a big, big deal. And I think this is just very chic, how they've done this overdrape and then use this bow coming down. The hats are out of this world. And it, it seems that in every month there's some kind of shopping tip. So these are the latest shopping tips of what you need to be buying. And I uh, imagine that uh, what I've taken away from this, I'm not um, that great in reading French, but they're getting suggestions from the major department stores at the time. And this is not very exciting, so we'll just Oh, and I love this. This is fancy dress. So you could go as a mummy. I think that's pretty clever. And this was all the Arabian Nights Ball in London. And I think this is, uh, this is not a, a, a magazine geared towards domestic arts, but there is a little bit of domestic arts here. Some nice ranges that they're working with. We're going to go on to a new month. I don't think that this is the most exciting cover, but um, you know, it does I'm sure there's a reason for it because she is going up in an airplane. And remember, this is 1913. So if you're going to dress your uh, fanny doll in a um, 
an, a suitable outfit for the airplane, that's it. And it seems like the uh, corset makers and the underwear uh, garments are um, pretty much advertised in every month. And you can see this Boulevard Houseman, this is the uh, street that the famous Huray Company was on. And we get to see a little mother and child. And now we're back to what we love, which is beautiful illustration, the latest fashions and the society page, the happenings. This magazine is very much into who uh, uh, the active woman. And here we have another active, uh, much better um, um, I forget what you called, aviatrix outfit. A much better aviatrix outfit. Remember, they they were out in the air, so they really had to be bundled up. But then the contrast is, this is so really modern. And then the contrast over here, something that would not be considered modern, but incredible. Some illustrations for the kids. This is the children's page. And then we have, of course, the interview with the latest charming uh, costume. And um, this one is by Madame Lucille. And those of you who, who are um, Titanic fans, Madame Lucille uh, was a villainess in the story of the Titanic, which happened a year before. But clearly her publicity people um, made sure she got into um, the magazines. Madame Lucille was really actually Lady Duff Gordon. She's a very talented designer, but uh, her, her conduct on the Titanic was despicable. And then we have more beautiful suits. This, I think, is really a stunning little uh, display. So I would imagine that if you wanted to do some serious walking rather than hobbling, you would take this little, these buttons out and you could really do some serious um, walking. These are promenade suits. They've made it, should be no, um, no question about that. Now, here we have the hairstyles. Now, I know that I've seen online some talk about how Barbara Streisand's hair wasn't right in Funny Girl and da 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 da. But you can see that there's really not that much difference between um, 1968 hairstyles and 1913's hairstyles. Nice illustration of domestic life. And some regalia. Now this is one of my favorite covers. And this is from March 1913. Look at the saturation of, of, of color. And um, just fantastic. The blue and the green and the purple. This is just amazing to me. And I think that we can see that really um, uh, films are already in circulation. The um, um, faces are being made up to look like how film stars are. And we can slightly see even in the, in the 1913, this is getting close to um, very much a 20s feel. Beautiful cover. Oh, and the first first illustration, I think, is uh, they're going to have a, um, style samples. So this is really exciting. Again, some beautiful the lines. It's too bad we don't have the color, but 
you can see the lines are very interesting. And again, back to my very 60s looking hairstyles. And here is some wonderful illustrations. You know, they didn't use that much color. Color in this time frame was very expensive. It's a new, it's a new phenomenon that color printing is reasonable. But I would love to see this for Fanny. I'd love to see this for Fanny and this. And of course, all of these. I hate to turn the page on this because it's just so beautiful. Oh, here we have the grand styles. So these are for the uh, grand ladies. And of course, they're gorgeous. But these hats over here are prominent uh, pieces. And these are just fantastic. And I love the length here. So this is a little shorter, so it's sporty. Intimate conversations and wonderful hats here too. And this is a wonderful scene. A reception. And here we have hats. Note they're getting a little smaller. They go from big to small. And we have blouses. And then we start to, this is the first time we're starting to see the um, young ladies' uh, dresses, where these are, there's clearly a different, they're trying to differentiate between ladies and young ladies. So this is what a youth would wear. So I would say like a teenager. They've made a big um, separation of that. And then the beautiful mantles. And then we start to add uh, children's clothing. So this is, we're getting late into the year for them to decide that children's clothing is a good part of the market. And then the grand styles. This in the center looks like it's all beaded. But I love this with all the buttons down the front. Anything. Oh, this is a beautiful illustration. David sitting in the office, being trying to be really quiet. Oh, it looks like we're in a new. No, we're still in the same. Now the hats have become big again. So um, small, large, were all fashionable. Look at the size of the plumes. Again, the hats have gotten large again, and the decoration is just amazing. Beautiful uh, draping on these. These are for young ladies. So this is what was suggested for the, the young ladies. Again, this one looks like it has amazing. Um, interesting about this magazine, the actual designers are not mentioned uh, very often. Once in a while, but not often. And then here we have the, the theater dresses. And then the latest hairstyles, loose, curly, and then the big, the grand style. And then this one is just amazing. 
I would imagine that those sequins are all made of fish gelatin, which are beautiful, but um, don't necessarily hold up real well. Now, this is what I really wanted you to see, is look at that cover. And clearly, she has fashion dolls. She's holding a, a, um, a, a drapery rod, because it is a rod, filled with fashion dolls. And we're still in 1913. So we have the grand concourse of the wardrobe of the feminine, or the dressing of the feminine. And here is a live in the, now we're, 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 we're promoting a, a department store. So this is what anybody could read this magazine and, and go to that department store and find that. So here we have the, the president of the Republic's ball. So there, I would assume that this is the president and the first lady, and this is his ball. So they're covering what's going on in the world. And all the fabulous hats. And of course, this is all available for you to buy at the department store. And suddenly we are into children's activity. But we're back now to gorgeous. Uh, the, the, the beautiful styles that are on this, the latest scene. So this is what's happening, people. Fabulous. Beautiful illustrations again. Now, if we did a hat like this for Fanny, you'd all say it's a mess. But you can see that they're very uh, exuberant. And that would be fun to read, but we don't have time for that. And some beautiful, I would imagine these are your little black outfits. But across from that is the young lady, what is recommended for the, the teens. And we have the society page. And those of you that have done the, um, watched the Cheryl Williams workshop, we, we taught how to make tassels so you could utilize it and make that ensemble. Now this looks like what's going on the, in the feminine world all over the place, uh, not just France. And then here you have, again, the, the um, Red Cross nurses are gearing up. And look at that cover. So we're in April now. Beautiful cover. And this is stunning. Beautiful suit with a fur trim. Small hat, so we go small, large, and then again, fabulous hairstyles. Very uh, piled up, uh, I'm sure with padding, hair pieces, um, what they did in the 60s, not much difference. They didn't have as good a hair, um, Hairspray, they had to use sugar water to, to set here. And then we have a room design. I won't turn the book. That one? And we have all these latest pieces. This, I would love to see what color this is. They don't give us a lot of color, but what they do give us is stunning. So we have a ceremony of the past bringing out the reenactors. And, oh, we have a whole bunch of, um, these costumes are all inspired from what I can read of um, 
historical men of the time. So the men are, um, um, it looks like they're all poli political um, gentlemen, and then the, the costumes are inspired by them and then translated into ladies' clothing, the old masculine feminine thing. And this is a wonderful suit, too. And this you can, again, you can buy it at the beautiful department store that still exists. And this is a wonderful piece. But we're looking for some drastic change. This is stunning. I love this, these multi-tiers. I always think that's wonderful. And this can make you look shorter or it can make you look taller. It depends on how you use it. Theater, theater costumes, not for actresses, but for people that attend. There is a serious amount of fur here. Fur was very expensive, and this would be a natural um, cocoon type of a fur coat, natural fur, not. Um, now this I thought was very interesting. This is the play uh, Cleopatra and um, done by an American theater group, which I thought was kind of interesting. I'm sure it caused a sensation. It has two pages in the magazine. So now we're into uh, May. So this is a beautiful, this really looks like this could be 1925. You wouldn't think it's 1913. Now this I thought was absolutely fascinating. So here's Anna Pavlova, and this is 1913. It wasn't really until 1914 that she became the international superstar that traveled the world. I mean, she did, she was a star, but not the worldwide phenomenon that she became. And she's fairly young here. Very interesting um, dance costume. And here we have the latest spring and summer hats, all very floribunda. These actually look fairly comfortable, these dresses. Now there's something in here I want to show you. Oh, and as I said, they uh, this is the King of Greece's funeral. So they really did uh, cover a lot of royal happenings uh, throughout Europe. Society page again. Now we have the um, actress, rather than most of the time they cover the uh, um, theater costumes. This is Ida Rubinstein and she went to a, a costume ball as a Helen of Troy, which I wouldn't recommend that because you're saying that you're the most beautiful woman in the world. And that she might have missed the mark on that. Sorry, Ida. Then we have uh, the latest hats. We've gotten small again, but you can see some very 60s looking hairstyles. This I think is out of this world. Very layered and many, many different textures. This girl should have gone as Helen of Troy. She's particularly beautiful. And this is for the, uh, to go to the races. The races are where a lot of the day wear uh, trends were set. And we're back to evening dresses. And again, look at, look at this. This really looks just absolutely like a 60s illustration, but this is 1913. And these are all beautifully done. And I would love to do all of these for Fanny. 
and these two. Now, I thought this was absolutely fascinating. So here we have society ladies, and if you look at them and you've studied art history, that their portraits, this is all about their, portrait, their portraits in their salons, these are all of the great um, impressionistic painters of the time. So at the time, these were just portraits of themselves in the salon, no big deal. But now they're hanging in all of the major um, museums in the world. But then they were just a little news flash. Um, a golfing outfit. Now, I wouldn't think of this as a, a, gol a golfing outfit, but I would imagine that it, this is probably all knit. So that's probably knitwear, which would be very comfortable. Again, it'd be a wonderful one too. Uh, and then this, look at this. this. If we just did a little bit of different um, skirt, this could be at absolutely 1930s. And this is 1913. Of course, more. There's actually a photo. It's kind of wonderful to see what their bodies really looked like. Footing, so this is out what you're gonna wear when you walk, and of course you better have your French Bulldog with you. This is all about what's happening out on foot. Now we're into a beautiful illustration. You can see almost Art Deco's almost there. And this is a whole article on tennis. So he's playing tennis, but they're not. But there are ladies' tennis outfits. So do a screenshot of that. And here's a whole bunch of tennis ensembles. Masculine, feminine. They've got this covered pretty well. Now, this is very interesting. Here we have our writing. So th this magazine was very much about activities. Beautiful illustrations. Golfing, yachting, your, your moves for uh, golfing. This I think you should take a look at because those, there are a lot of you out there that are very good knitters and crocheters. At, uh, at crocheting and this jacket or sweater, I don't know what you'd call it. Um, I guess it's a jacket, it's all knitted. It appears to be, yeah, knit. So that's pretty special. I'm sure it was very comfortable. And now we have the automobile. So that means the automobile is coming into fashion. Look at this, it's just a keeper keep the, the debris from hitting her in the face. And here are your all of your automobile hats. Now this is a gorgeous illustration. Oh, I should show you, look at the inside of this car. It's like the size of most people's apartments in Paris. I'll just go through that pretty quick. Is there something really special I want you to see? This is a wonderful, these are all out and about. So it looks like they captured this with uh, cameras and this one, number 13, she's very daring. There's quite a bit of light showing there. This is stunning. Oh, now we have some gorgeous illustrations. Look at those colors. Really very art, art, uh, art deco, which is, was considered not even found until 1925, so this is 
very, very avant-garde compared to this type of illustration, which is beautiful. And those that are gonna do some tassels, there's a tassel there. We've got some evening headdresses. Here's some travel wear for the Le Voyage, Les Voyage. Beautiful cover. Again, that could be much later looking. The stylish dog. So in case you don't know what kind of dog to have, they would suggest which type of dog. The boy terrier, I think is interesting because he looks more like a chihuahua. And traveling veils and nets. And this was, I thought was very interesting. This is a sculptress, a famous sculptress. And look how she's dressed to do sculpting. That's, and we've got her costume party illustration. I'm gonna flip through this and then we're suggesting children's clothing. And of course the uh, dance, avant-garde dancing was all the new thing. And here we, again, we have the ladies getting their portraits in their salons. These don't seem to be, I don't recognize any of the uh, ladies uh, or the, the painters where the others are very recognizable. And here again, you know, uh, they did get it right in Funny Girl. Those are very 60s looks. And look at this hat. This is a screen, absolute screen. And we have little historical garments. And now we have a new month, and I love this. I think this is just sensational, and the illustration is out of this world. Got some historical things, and things are starting to change, and we have a beautiful evening gown, but she wants to inform you that she is a member of the Red Cross, which is a, a very important um, position to be in at that time for, for women uh, of all ages. Beautiful illustrations. And they, if you want to be chic, it's saying that. If you want to have something dear and be um, chic, this is the look. That's what they're suggesting. I'm not going to turn the book that way for this. I'm going to just go because there's Again, we are suggesting um, the right kind of dogs to have to be fashionable. <laughs> and then you have your theater costumes. The year is coming to an end. And so if the year coming to end, that would be the time that you'd have a lot of theater. Hat shapes. You know, they go from tiny to giant, but look at this one, it's got a little cat head on it. Now then you have, I love this because it's a writing ensemble, but it's 18th century inspired. And this is what I wanted you to see. So this is what's so important for Fanny and this book has given us a lot of inspiration this is something I've never seen before, and this is Articles de Paris, and these are all Fanny dolls, and they have been dressed, costumed by the latest and greatest uh, designers in Paris at the time. Now, they look kind of uh, funny because 
I think that the photographer who photographed them didn't really pose them very nicely, like this one. I mean, she looks like she's ready to hug a tree, but you can see the incredible style and you know the the you know the avant-garde short um, skirt. But this is really interesting to see. They're all fannies. They're all the uh, Simon and Halbig lady dolls, and this is really at page. 345 of this book. So this was all, and it was very, um, uh, these were fashion dolls. These were dressed by the designers to show the fashions, and I'm sure they would sell them for children, to, to mothers for their children, but they were meant to be counter display pieces. And then you have the final, uh, fabulous hat display. And then of course, this is, this is the end. And here we, right now we have Madame Lucille still at the forefront, uh, even at the end of the year. So perhaps the, the history has not been kind to Madame Lucille, but um, I think in her lifetime, she remained fairly successful. All right, friends, I hope you enjoyed this little um, perusal through this wonderful book. And again, I want to thank uh, Bradley Justice for gifting this to us. It's one of our treasures of our book collection. Thank you. Bye-bye. Remember to like, subscribe, and hit that notification button.